Hi everyone. Today I want to talk about temperatures for soap making. This video is really long overdue. People have been asking me about this for a long time because a lot of my earlier soap videos, well nearly all of my videos, I don't take the temperature of my oils or my lye solution. I just generally use a warmish lye solution and I use a lot of liquid oils in my recipes. I put the two together and make soap. I don't worry about it too much. But the question comes up a lot um, because lots of soap makers and in a lot of the um, soap making information online often talks about it being really important that you have your oils and your lye solution at the same or at the correct temperature to make the soap. So I want to go into that a little bit, explain when that does matter, when it doesn't and why and that will help explain why my soap videos look the way they do and why for a lot of them I don't take any temperatures at all. So I'm going to just talk generally about cold process soap making. Uh, there are some considerations to be made regarding hot process soap making and temperatures too. I'll talk about that a little bit later. But basically with cold process soap making Temperatures of your oils and your lye solution, they do matter, but it really depends on the recipe. And that's why in a lot of my videos, particularly my early ones, I don't worry about the temperature at all because nearly all of those recipes are made in a particular way, in the way that, you know, it doesn't matter so much. So why don't they matter in those recipes? The reason is that most of my recipes, particularly those early ones, they are made with lots and lots of liquid oils, unsaturated fats, virtually nearly all olive oil, maybe with a little bit of castor oil and a little bit of coconut oil melted in. But I'm not using lots of palm oil or um, butters or waxes or things like that. So when you're using lots of oils in your recipes that are liquid at room temperature, there's no worry about them solidifying if you add a coolish or cool lye solution to those oils. If on the other hand you're using recipes that are very high in saturated fats, waxes, butters, things like palm oil, coconut oil, you know in cold weather is, is solid at room temperature, things like that. If you're using a lot of those in your recipes and you add a cool lye solution that's not warm enough to that you can get what's called a false trace. What happens with that is the mixture can thicken up um, earlier than you would expect it to and what that is when that's a false trace it's because the lye solution isn't warm enough and when you add it to the oil mixture that has a lot of those um, solid fats in it um, it can cool them down and it can trigger some of them to solidify so you get this kind of thickened grainy texture in the mixture which isn't a trace at all and some people think oh gosh my soap's tracing and then pour it out into the mold and then realize later that it's separated it wasn't emulsified at all but it was a false trace because the lye solution and the oils weren't warm enough but that's only really relevant for recipes that use those hard oils and those butters and waxes and heavily saturated fats, you know, things like palm oil, uh, butters, coconut oil in cold weather and things like that. And as I said, with recipes that are really high in oils that are liquid at room temperature, it doesn't matter so much. You can use a really cool lye solution and as long as those oils aren't going to solidify, which they won't if they're all liquid. So for example, olive oil, you know, it would have to be extremely, extremely cold weather, I think, or, you know, a fridge or a freezer before olive oil would start to solidify. So at most room temperatures, you can add a cold lye solution to an olive oil, you know, a Castile soap recipe. There's not going to be any issues with false trace because olive oil is not going to solidify if it gets cooled by a lye solution that isn't warm. So do you understand what I'm saying? It really depends on the recipe and most in particular, the oils that you're using. So the trick is, is to really evaluate your recipe, look at what's in it. And if it's got lots of saturated fats in it, 
or butters or any beeswax or anything like that that could solidify, that's a recipe that you would need to ensure that you're making the soap with the oils and the lye solution warm enough. A really common technique that a lot of soap makers use, it's a brilliant one actually, it's called the heat transfer method. And I've used it for years and you've probably noticed in some of my videos I use it. And how that one works is you mix your lye solution and most of you should know that when you mix a fresh lye solution, that's an exothermic reaction, so it generates a lot of heat. So that lye solution, when it's very first mixed, you know, so when the sodium hydroxide is first dissolved into the water, it gets very, very hot. Um, and you can use the heat of that lye solution. So rather than waiting for it to cool down, you can use the heat of that lye solution to add to an oil mixture that might have some semi-solid oils in it. You know, you might have a bit of coconut oil and a bit of cocoa butter or some shea butter or, you know, different types of saturated fats in your oil mixture. You can use that hot lye solution, pour that into those oils and use the heat of the lye solution to melt your oils. And hopefully it's hot enough. You know, it depends on the temperature of the oils. At my house, it gets cold inside at winter. We don't always use our heater so my room temperature might actually be quite cool compared to somebody else's room temperature in summer or my room temperature in summer. It can fluctuate a lot. So you've got to take that into consideration. Obviously, the cooler your oils, the more heat they're going to take. Um, and the heat transfer method won't work if you've got lots and lots of butters or saturated fats in your oil blend or they're too cool to start with. So you might need to melt them a little bit, but often that heat transfer method uh, works quite well. It works really, really well if you've got mostly soft oils, like say olive oil mixed with a bit of coconut oil because coconut oil melts really easily. And usually if a bit of solid coconut oil is in that mixture, then the heat of a freshly mixed hot lye solution poured into that, that'll be fine to melt your coconut oil. You've just got to watch that method if your oils are cooler than you think they might be because that you've got to have enough heat in that lye solution. So in cool weather, watch out for that heat transfer method. Maybe warm up your oils just a little bit uh, if you think they won't melt, particularly if you're using things that have a really high melting temperature like waxes and some butters but you know you can do your own research on the melting temperatures of your ingredients that you're using for soap making that's the trick the other thing to bear in mind with that heat transfer method is that uh, it depends on the water amount in your recipe so if you're using a very low water amount in your soap recipe you're going to have less liquid in your lye solution it's going to be smaller so if you're depending on the heat of your lye solution to melt your oils as you mix them in, bear in mind that if you're using a really low water recipe, you're not going to have as much hot lye liquid to go into your oils as you would if you were using a high water recipe. And I've got other videos that talk about water levels in soap making. I'll link those below. Um, but yeah, you know, a high water soap recipe is going to have a bigger lye solution. And if that's hot and you're relying on that to melt your oils for the heat transfer method, that's going to be more effective than if you're using a low water soap recipe. Now, you know, there's loads of <laughs> other information and reasons why you might use a high water soap or a moderate water level in your soap or a low water level in your soap and that's another thing altogether. So all of these factors all come into not only uh, formulating your soap recipes but how you actually make the soap as well. So if you're using mainly liquid oils in your soap recipes you don't have to worry too much about the temperature of your lye solution other than the hotter the lye solution, the warmer your oils and your soap batter will be and that does speed up saponification and will make it trace a little bit faster. But it's not going to, you know, if you're just using liquid oils, you're not going to get a false trace or anything nasty like that happen. It just, if things are cool, it's just going to be a bit slower and you might have to blend it a bit longer to get that trace happening. 
Um, if you're not sure and you're using a mixture of different oils and you'd like to have a more simple blanket rule approach, then I would suggest just keeping everything around body temperature. That's a really good um, general level for your lye solution and for your oils to be. Um, that way they won't be too cool that they could solidify and give you a false trace, but they're also not going to be too hot either, which can cause acceleration and volcanoes and things like that. Um, so body temperature is about 37 degrees Celsius, and I think that's about 97, 98 degrees Fahrenheit. If you can cool your lye solution down to around that mark and warm your oils to around that mark, you know, and if you're using waxes or really hard butters in your recipe, you might need to melt the whole oil batch up higher than that in order to melt it, but then let it cool down a little bit. So just look for that medium level warmth across your lye solution and your oils and then put them together. And I actually think that's probably the thinking behind the general advice that is to keep your oils and your lye at the same temperature, make sure they're the same. And that's because it's, it's good advice for general recipes that use, you know, you might be using palm oil or lots of coconut oil or, you know, lots of butters. That's probably really good advice for those recipes. I do have this infrared thermometer gun now, which is brilliant. I love it. Um, but what I used to do was even for those recipes where I knew it was more important to have the temperatures right, I would just feel them. I would just feel the, the oil bucket and I would feel the lye container and I kind of just have a bit of a sense. It either feels really hot or it feels warm or it feels cold. So I would just, bit of an old fashioned, old school way, but I would literally just go by feel and go, oh yeah, that feels warm. Oh yeah, that feels warm. That should be okay with that recipe. But like I said before, there's so many things that come into play. You want to look at acceleration of trace um, and acceleration of saponification and if that's going to be an issue with your recipe. You want to understand about volcanoes and salt, soap volcanoes and that, you know, your soap recipe can bubble up in the mold if everything's too hot. I do have a lot of these soap making terms explained on my soap making terms page on my website, which I put together a few months ago. I will link that in the description box below. Please read that. There's a really, there are some good explanations in there of what all of this stuff means. Unfortunately, you know, there aren't really any blanket rules. Keeping everything at about body temperature, that's gonna serve you really well for nearly every recipe. But if you don't wanna to have to bother with that and you wanna do the heat transfer method or you're just making olive oil soap or you know soap with soft oils and you're not using any waxes or butters or palm oil or anything like that, then maybe you don't need to worry about your temperatures at all. So you know, evaluate that and decide what works best for you. Regarding hot process soap making, um, I never take the temperature of anything for hot process soap making because I'm forcing the saponification of my soap recipe through that hot process method anyway. So I'm not too worried if things are, are too warm. Obviously you don't want everything to be extremely hot, but with hot process soap making, uh, you're forcing that saponification, you're forcing the gel phase, the soap saponification reaction is exothermic anyway, so it generates its own heat. So even if you tried, you couldn't really keep that temperature down. Um, I make my hot process soap usually in my slow cooker, um, and I usually have the temperature just on low. Sometimes I put it on high to begin with, but then I turn it down to low. And I find that works quite well. I'm not getting anything too explosive happening, <laughs> um, but it, you know, it's not too slow either. Sometimes if you have it too low, it can take forever and it depends on how patient you are. Um, but generally with my oils and my lye solution for hot process, 
generally I'm melting everything in the slow cooker to begin with anyway. So the oils are sitting there. I'm just letting them melt and there might be like for example in my um, honey and oat hot process soap recipe for beginners you'll see that I put beeswax in that recipe. I think I have cocoa butter and a couple of other things in there too. So I let that melt before I do anything else. Well I make my lye solution while that's melting. So there's no issue with that as long as um, you're following a hot process where you're kind of melting everything to begin with anyway. Um, it doesn't matter if you put a hot lye solution into that. I don't think you need to wait for that lye solution to cool in hot process soap making because it's going to be a hot process anyway. So you can just put your hot freshly made lye solution straight in. Um, and your soap will trace really fast, but that's fine. You, you're forcing it all to accelerate with hot process anyway. I'll be putting together an article to go along with this video or a blog post that will be up on my website. I'll put a link to that below. So I'll write down all of those details and all of a little bit more detail about melting points and different temperatures and some links for you all. So if you're wanting to just double check any of your understanding, have a look at that. It'll give more detail. Thanks everyone. I think that's about it. I hope I've answered all your questions and Joey, thank you for your patience. If you get to see this, hello and thanks for your suggestion. Sorry I have taken way too long to get to this video, but I'm glad I've done it now and hopefully that's helped. So yeah, look at the oils you're using in your recipes and evaluate whether or not you might get a false trace if things are too cool with that. If that's the case, then you'll need to look at the temperatures of your oil and your lye solution and keep things a little bit warm. But remember, with cold process soap making, don't make things too hot. Keep them, you know, around that moderate body temperature warm level. That's what you're after. Too cold is not good. Too hot is not good either. I'll put all the details of the temperatures and that stuff in the blog post for the video. Um, and yeah, let me know if you've got any questions. Thanks everyone, hope that's helped. See you in the next video, bye.